I am Dr. Arun Lakhanpal, and today I am going to speak to you about a very common medical condition that we frequently encounter in our clinical practice, and that is fever. If you have a fever, it sends alarm bells ringing, but it is very rarely that there is a serious cause. Most fevers are seasonal viral that is and tend to subside by themselves all you need is supportive care although you do need to be aware of certain red flags that might set alarm bells ringing and there are certain other vulnerable group of patients who should consult their physician fairly early on if there is any kind of an infection Normal human body temperature is 37 degrees Celsius or 98.2 degrees Fahrenheit but this tends to vary according to the time of the day such as it is the highest between 4 to 6 p.m. and is the lowest at about 6 a.m. The temperature can also vary in women of childbearing age where it can go up by as much as 0.7 degrees centigrade or 1 degree Fahrenheit and eventually comes down when the uh, lady actually starts her periods. So it is pathological or you call it a fever if the body temperature goes beyond this normal expected variation. Also, it is important if associated with the rise in body temperature, there are symptoms such as peripheral vasoconstriction, which the patients describe as peripheries being cold or shivering, which is vasodilatation. Or if there are other features of infection, such as coughing with sputum or burning micturation, or abdominal pain or diarrhea. In most cases, it is sore throat, a runny or stuffy nose with fever, which indicates this is perhaps just the seasonal flu and is generally of no concern. The red flags would be if there is associated headache and vomiting or if the patient is getting drowsy or not passing any urine or if there is a spreading rash or if the patient is very cold and the blood pressure or the oxygen saturations are low. In such case, patients, you must immediately consult a doctor. Other groups uh, where you should consult a physician early on are people with seizure disorder because a high temperature lowers the seizure threshold and makes patients more likely to have a fit and patients with advanced respiratory or cardiovascular diseases because the oxygen requirement and the requirement for adequate blood flow goes up during high fever. In the absence of any red flag or alarm symptoms in patients who are otherwise healthy with no specific symptoms, generally there is no cause for alarm. Yes, fever can be associated with certain malignancies like lymphoma or certain serious infections uh, like tuberculosis and it may also be associated with certain medications such as those used for depression or anxiety but these fevers would be quite pronounced and would last more than 7 to 10 days during which time the seasonal viral fever would tend to settle down. So the advice is if you are healthy with no specific symptoms other than uh, a fever, mild cough, a runny nose, a bit of a body ache which is invariably there with any fever then 
there is no cause for alarm. Take plenty of oral fluids, take rest and take paracetamol if you do not have any problems with your liver. Aspirin is generally avoided and I personally tend to avoid nimicillide but you can consult your doctor and take non-steroidals such as ibuprofen or diclofenac if you have used them in the past without any problems. If the fever still does not subside, you can use tap water sponging, that is soaking a towel in tap water and wiping your body to allow the temperature to come down. If there is any problem or if you see any red flags or if you are from one of the vulnerable groups as I mentioned or if you are immunosuppressed on cancer treatment or on steroids or treatment of rheumatoid arthritis you must consult your physician as soon as possible. It is also important to measure your temperature and record its pattern and variability which helps us to pinpoint the cause of your fever. If you have started on any new medications you must tell your doctor. Make sure you also mention the method of recording your temperature because the fever or the temperature recorded from the ear or the mouth are fairly similar but rectal temperature as measured in children is a degree higher because it measures the core body temperature and that measured in your armpits or the axillary temperature tends to uh, be lower than your actual uh, temperature. Make sure beyond the simple over-the-counter fever medications you do not self-medicate with antibiotics. Make sure that you have consulted your physicians before getting any tests done and if the fever has lasted more than 7 to 10 days you must see your doctor because any seasonal or viral fevers are generally expected to settle by then. Thank you.